1520 WEMB Sports Radio. I love baseball. Marky Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now. And I'm not going to give you, you know, the highlights right now. The Braves, I figure you pretty much know that game's 24 hours old. Braves and Nats split. Actually could have been much worse. Uh, so the Braves stay six and a half up. And really now it looks like, yeah, it's their division to lose. I mean, what's going to happen? There? You know, that sort of thing. But this... Sunday, it was the Baseball Hall of Fame inductions in Cooperstown. I've been there once for the inductions. Really liked it, obviously. You get a AAA discount. Uh, I mean, what can you say? I, I just, you know, the charm of Cooperstown. Maybe you have to be there. Maybe you have to be a baseball nut. I don't know. Motels and fields as far as the eye can see. In the upstate New York countryside, you know, you talk about the Smoky Mountains being beautiful and all that. Well, so is upstate New York. You know, that really is. And all right, okay, it's a myth that Abner Doubleday invented baseball. We get it. All right, but does not. We're happy for the myth due to the fact that what that allows is, well, uh, let's just say that that myth allows us to have the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Okay? I mean, you know, it, you couldn't... It, it's a wonderful place to have it, even if it's not accessible by airport or something. But the problem this year is a lot of people think that this was the weakest field ever for the Hall of Fame, and five guys made it. And the idea was... Boy, this really shows how far baseball has fallen. Example, two relief pitchers, two DHs, and a starting pitcher with a 368 ERA. And there is some wondering if Roy Holiday would have made it if he hadn't have passed away. And Roy Holiday then becomes the first player to be the modern-day player, let's just say, I'm not putting a logo on my bronze cap, although it's his family that makes that decision. So therefore, they get millions of dollars from the Blue Jays and from the Phillies. He's best known for pitching with the Blue Jays, but he has postseason success with the Phils. And neither one of them gets the honor of having their logo on the cap. I thought it was bad when Jim Tomei wanted to be politically correct, and have the C that he wore for, I think, 12 games of his career on his cap and not Chief Wahoo. I thought that was, you know, being too political. However, uh, you know, not having any logo is political in its own sense. And really, in a lot of ways, I mean, okay, you can say, for instance, when Reggie Jackson put the New York Yankees NY on his cap, that that was disrespectful to the Oakland A's, which he played the longest with, or the California Angels, although I don't think the Angels ever really had a chance to be on his Hall of Fame plaque. We can say that. And you know, to my head, I don't know whether Frank Robinson went in as an Oriole or a Red. I don't know that. I should. But to go in as nobody. He used to have on a guest, he sort of, Got a little shy, but he runs a Facebook page called Politically Incorrect Baseball Fans. And he really says, you know what? What if you roasted the ball players in their Hall of Fame induction speech instead of, you know, praise them? Oh, those speeches get boring. Actually, I kind of like some of those speeches. I remember when Ray Dandridge, the great Negro Leaguer, was enshrined. And he had the best speech I ever remember. I have always loved the game of baseball. And now it looks like the game of baseball loves me. Oh. Tear to your eye. Oh my goodness. Well, here we go. Let's um let's hear a little bit from the uh from the enshrinings. 
Okay, I mean they deserve their uh, day in the sun, obviously, and uh, such. But the, uh, but okay, let's see here. Let's talk about the no logo on the cap. Randy Holiday, Roy Holiday's uh, widow, she talks about it here. Ray and Ryan and I decided that we're going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with no logo on his hat. Both teams quickly reached out to us, telling us how proud they were of that decision, validating the choice that we knew in our hearts was right, was in fact the correct one. We know without a doubt, had Roy been here with us today, this is the decision that he would have made. And more than anything, would want both organizations to know that they hold a huge place in our heart and always will. So the widow got it right, and every player who ever was enshrined in Cooperstown, every manager who was ever enshrined in Cooperstown, got it wrong. Very interesting. Mariano Rivera got it right by who he thanked, and he got it right enough on his playing career that he became the first player to ever receive 100% of the vote to be enshrined into Baseball's Hall of Fame. To the fans. You guys always push me to the best. All those New York fans. When I was in Yankee Stadium, Pitching, it feels like I was pitching with 55,000 people next to me throwing one pitch after another. You guys are the best. And man, without your support, I cannot do it. You always push me to the limit. Always wishing me the best, but always also, all those booms where I didn't do my job, I really deserve it. I deserve it because you guys came to see me succeed. But also, those guys also, they have a bat in their hand. They have a job to do, too. Well, let's... <laughs> hey, you gotta... I mean, nipping at his heels. He's, cr he's saying that made me a better pitcher. Remember that when you say that I'm too critical. Or when I say, hey, one of the reasons why... Historically, ETSU football has been lousy, and uh, it, it, Tennessee football now is lousy. One of the reasons why is because Kid Glove Media. Uh, but anyway, R Mariana Rivera, that, Ken West, a New Yorker, uh, says this. He says, Ken Mariana v Rivera, the greatest of all time out of the bullpen, shortened to GOAT which coincidentally is what they call him in Arizona since he blew a ninth-inning lead in Game 7 of the 2001 series. Mariano the GOAT. Anyway, what a great job he had. 90% of the game is pitched by others. He comes in at the very end and gets all the glory. It's like a guy coming in on the last minutes of a two-hour movie and getting starring credits. Nice work if you can get it. I think that was Burt Reynolds and Smokey and the Bandit 3 which is one of the reasons why Smokey and the Bandit 3 isn't fondly remembered. But um, nevertheless, that, uh, yeah, 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 uh, hits it on the head. I mean, I will say this about Rivera. I like the speech. I like the speech that he gave. But, yeah, a relief pitcher is the one that got 100% of the vote. That shows the New York bias of the Baseball Hall of Fame voting. And that shows also just how specialized baseball has become where you're now voting in DHs, let's say, like, oh, I don't know, uh, Harold Baines. One of the most consistent run producers of the 1980s and 90s, he is one of only 17 players in history with at least 2,800 hits and 1,600 RBIs. Please welcome six-time All-Star and now Hall of Famer, Harold Baines. I got to tell you the truth. I don't have a problem with Harold Baines being in. I don't like how he got in, that his own old manager and GM were in charge of the veterans vote. And so, oh yeah, Harold Baines. I mean, the fix was in, so to speak. I didn't like that. 
I do think Harold Baines is a worthy Hall of Famer. I was a Harold Baines fan back in the day. I thought he was extremely underrated. I remember when the White Sox, he was once the all-time home run hitter for the White Sox, and I remember they retired his number while he was still playing, when he was playing with the Rangers. The only reason I would say he shouldn't be in, he was a DH, too specialized, and that is an argument that one could use uh, against uh, Edgar Martinez, who I would not have voted for for that reason, uh, for that matter, Lee Smith and Mariano Rivera. Mike Musina is the one that uh, maybe you say, uh, you know, well, what about him? And what Wes says, when he finally won his 20th game, he got out of that place faster than a French soldier leaves a battlefield. The guy completed about 10% of his starts. Coincidentally, I complete about 10% of the starts with my wife, and I don't even get honorable mention. A lifetime 368 ERA? I gotta tell you, Mike, that the Hall of OK is just three doors down. The thing is, Jack Morris got in with a 390 ERA, and that's the reason why not to put in Jack Morris a couple of years ago. Then again, sometimes that's a sign of stats don't tell the whole story. I mean, 390 doesn't tell the whole story of Jack Morris. Summer, and